This is lecture 6 of uh, Computer Science 147 course, uh, Combinational Logic, Gates and Design is our topic uh, for this lecture. Uh, its subtopics are, we will be discussing about transistor switch models, uh, combinational logic gates and combinational logic circuit design. So why transistor switch model, we, why do we need to review that part? So any digital system, including processors, uh, contains electronic element called transistor. Okay. Whenever we talk about gates and other component like ALU, register file, memory, those are all abstract concept. Okay, abstract concept. Those are all kind of logical component. You can say, but all of them at the end of the day is implemented with a physical electronic component which is transistor. So to understand a computing system we better start understanding at the transistors. Now transistor is purely electrical and electronic component and its electrical electronic characteristics and the related studies are out of our scope. What we'll be doing will model a transistor in terms of almost like a logical model. So we won't be going deep into the electrical characteristic study of transistors, but we'll more uh, bound ourselves to the study of the logical operation point of view on a transistors. And then we'll see using the transistor, combining this transistor, we start implementing combinational logic gates. Okay, and then with those logic gates, we'll see how we can design logic circuit for a given uh, problem. Okay, given problem, how we can uh, create a logic circuit. <clears throat> so let's start with transistor switch model. So to discuss this, I usually start with this picture. Okay, so who doesn't know what this picture is? This is a picture of the very famous uh, the lock gate uh, in the Panama Canal. Okay, lock gate in the Panama Canal. So what does it do? It basically uh, control the flow of water through the canal. If you have time later, uh, please go and search in Google about this Panama uh, <coughs> lock gates and Panama Canal and how that works. Very, very interesting engineering uh, artifact basically you, you, you should be you, you should know how it works and how it basically uh, makes the big ships uh, go through the canal uh, going from Pacific to Atlantic and vice versa though this canals actually runs over the mountain okay so this is very ingenious piece of technology very interesting engineering so if you have time uh, uh, there are a lot of videos on this, so you probably want to search in Google about the Panama Canal and how the technology works there. Please do so. But for our perspective, <coughs> why I bring up this this specific example of the locket? Okay, so what this locket does is you have to control the flow of the water. Okay, control the flow of the water. Similarly, or it's an analogy to what a transistor does. A transistor controls the flow of electron through wires. Okay. Here, this lock gets like when it is closed, it stops the water flow. When it is open, uh, it starts water starts flowing. Uh, uh, now the lock gates are operated electrically and electromechanically it has a mechanical component it physically opens and close on the other hand transistors if you imagine there is a such a gate which controls like which opens up and then makes the electron flow available in the in the wire or sometimes it closes to stop the electron flow through the wire uh, that opening and closing happens purely electronically Okay, electronically and electrically, there is no mechanical moving component 
involved in the transistor okay everything is done electronically <coughs> okay so these transistors we uh, draw with some schematic symbols okay and there is is there there are many many types of in, uh, transistors uh, by technology they are different uh, but functionality they are almost like same uh, so modern computing system uses a type of transistor called MOS okay it's called MOS or metal oxide semiconductor so these are specific te technical term uh, type of material is used to build up this electronic component on piece of silicon they're metal oxide semiconductor transistor <coughs> and and uh, we'll see later that logic gets build up with this type of MOS is called a CMOS te technology. Uh, it's a complementary metal oxide semiconductor technology uh, that every modern computer uses nowadays. Anyway, so coming back to these transistors, MOS transistors, there are two types of MOS transistors. One is called a NMOS transistor, other is called a PMOS transistor. So materially and how they, they are built up, they're a little bit different from each other. Uh, like in its electrical property, in its chemical properties and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, what happens, they control the electron flow a little bit in a different way. Uh, we'll discuss that. Uh, before that, uh, let's say a transistor is electronic device which has three terminal uh, marked is as uh, G, S and D. Uh, D stands for drain, S stands for source and G stands for get. Okay, so both NMOS and PMOS has this D, G, S transist, uh, terminals. Uh, schematic drawing point of view, a PMOS differs from the NMOS. There is a little bubble uh, is drawn on the gate side okay little bu bubble is drawn on the gate side now the electron flows from your drain to source electron flows from drain to source and also your like here also like drain to source or it's basically, you know, like terminals are kind of interchangeable. We just mark it as one as a S, another as D. It can flow other way as well, depending on what potentials and all this stuff we are applying between those two terminals. But point is that electron flows between these two terminals, D and S, drain and source. Okay. Now this gate terminal controls that flow. For a NMOS transistor, if the gate terminal is set to a logical one, we say the gate is open. Means there is a flow, electron flow established between these two terminals, D and S terminal, uh, that electron flow is established. If G is set to logical zero, right, then this we say the gate is closed and there is no electron flow uh, possible between these two terminals so you can s imagine this zero and one is kind of an electrical signal right one is presence of a voltage and uh, zero is absence of a voltage so we are controlling the flow of the electron through this specific device either setting g value to zero or one so one is open for nmos and zero is closed for nmos now PMOS is exactly the opposite, okay? For PMOS transistors, if G is set to one, this is a closed, okay? So no uh, electron can flow between these two terminal, source and drain terminal, no electron is possible to flow back and forth. And through the, if the G is set to zero, this transistor is on or open, then, uh, is uh, this there is a flow starts electron flow starts between source and drain so we can other way you can say a zero setting on the g terminal on a pmos it turn on this transistor or turn on the gates it makes this flow possible otherwise the gate is closed and will no electron flow happens nmos is just opposite one is open or on transistor on 
zero is it's a off position this gate is closed now uh, how this transistor looks like on a, on a hardware so this is roughly let's say a, a size of a modern electronic chip it's a processor or any other digital processor circuits etc let's say this is this is one standard size like uh, maybe it's kind of 2 millimeter by 2 millimeter packaging or little more than that maybe inside the uh, the real silicon is possibly 1 millimeter square 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter but point is that this is very small uh, small footprint from the area perspective but within even within this area there may be or there can be like billions of such transistor so transistors are really, really tiny, small microscopic devices. All right. Uh, so this small footprint, it can have a billions of transistor device packed inside this small area. And if we open up this chip and actually go and you know uh, look at uh, these, uh, look at the uh, look at try to look at this. Uh, each individual transistor using using electron microscope it looks like something like this like this scale is you can see it's a two micrometer square and you can actually see under electron microscope there are really structure which just has been marked as a source gate and drain so these guys are all electronically you know like uh, controlled uh, flow between source and drain uh, that electron this gate is controlled controlling that uh, so this is like really a, a real look under electron microscope of a of a given transistors now let's look at the switching model of this nmos transistor let's say i have a power source a battery vdd uh, which is like one terminal is grounded another terminal is kind of floating there it's waiting to be get connected to the rest of the circuit and we have another terminal which is just grounded and let's say i have a nmos transistors which on the drain side i have a power source which can like push in some electron through this gate and uh, then the source side is grounded there and let's say i have a kind of an like switch uh, for connected on the gate terminal of the NMOS. So I can switch from a ground to a voltage. So logic 0 and this is like logic 1. So what is happening is basically your when there is it is it is on on the uh, on the ground touches this transistor is closed and nothing is happening through it. But as soon as somehow we flip this switch and connect it to the VDD, which makes it logical one, so this gate is open, and I have a current established between drain and source terminal. Between drain and source terminal, let's call it a current amount IDS, drain to source current. Okay. Remember, electrically, uh, the current direction and electron direction are opposite to each other, so that means electron is really flowing from the source to drain terminal source to drain terminal it is just flowing through like that we make the current other way so when we and most transistor is on we, there is an establishment of current when it was off there is no current okay similarly pmos transistor if works in similar way but it's an gate on and off convention is different when this gate is on, means is a logical one, then we don't have any current established between source and drain. As soon as we switch, flip the switch to ground, means logical zero, we have a current established between source and drain. Okay, source and drain, there is a current established. Of course, you can imagine electron is flowing the other way. But that's a different thing. Let's say there is a current established between source and drain of the PMOS, and uh, we can uh, just by the flip of the switch we can turn off that current. Just make it on, make it off. Okay, so that's that's the switching model, and that's all we need to know in this class.
we won't be going in the electrical characteristics, how the current waveform look like, how are the power characteristics and so on and so forth. Not very important for our class, our understanding.